It's time for another card review, which means more crazy cards doing insane things. Let's talk about it. Hey, buddy, watch this. But before I get into it, I just want to say thank you. Today is American Thanksgiving, and I'm just happy you guys are joining me for all these card reviews. There's been a lot of support, so thank you for watching pretty much every day. I greatly appreciate that. That said, let's talk about our first card here. It's Ankar. It is a new warrior legendary weapon. Legendary weapons just popping back in randomly here. It's a three mana two three for stats. And it reads after your hero attacks, draw a pirate from your deck. So at a base level, that's a three mana draw three, which is actually much more efficient than normal. But of course it's delayed. You're not going to be drawing three immediately. That will take course over multiple turns and is you know, subject to removal, acidic swamp ooze means you probably would only draw one. But I have to say, even at just drawing one, a three mana two three weapons almost fairly statted when you compare it to something like fiery war axe for warrior, uh, even less something like live wire lance, another weapon we've seen. This one looks pretty solid in comparison to those other options, right? Similar or better stat lines. It's pumping out six total damage and it's drawing you three cards. Like that's a lot of stuff to do for three mana. The question is, are those things going to work out well in your favor? Or are they going to fit contextually into a deck? Now we have seen Pirate Warrior in the past and it loved weapons and it loved pirates. So this certainly sounds like it's a good fit. But I have some questions about that just because Pirate decks for Warrior traditionally were very high pressure high output, they were looking for bursty plays, they wanted damage quickly, lots of immediate pressure, and cards coming on a delayed draw and a lower attack, higher durability weapon weren't traditionally good fits in that style of play. You would much rather have a high attack, low durability weapon and stuff your deck with weapons because you might be playing you know, a weapon every couple turns. So one that's hanging around for a while can slow you down. Now, that said, a weapon that's drawing you a card every turn that you can play kind of negates the need to have all those extra weapons in your deck because maybe you're just playing more pirates. So every time I break this card down, it's kind of like, okay, that's sort of insane and really powerful, but maybe it doesn't fit super well. And that leaves me in a spot where I'm kind of torn for this card. And as I've looked at community reactions as well, some people are saying this is OP. Some people are saying this is trash. So this card seems to be hotly debated so far. But here's what I'll tell you. It's a card that does a lot. And I think what that means is when you have a card with this much output, with this much efficiency, it's probably just going to make sense at some point. I'm going to be clear. I do not think this will be good immediately in this expansion. Trump might say this is a one-star card because Pirate Warrior isn't going to make sense right now. But I think this card just has a lot of good characteristics and sometime over the next, like, uh, 15 months that this card is in standard format, I have to imagine it will make sense. I think it also has some positive interactions with Galakrond, so it might even make sense now if the attack invoking from Galakrond comes out and there's a pirate invoke card, for instance, Ankar suddenly is just like, oh yeah, okay, I get it, that's perfect. But even if there's not, there's still going to be some deck where this lines up, where it makes sense, just because it does too much. So will it be meta-defining? No, I don't think so. Will it be strong? I think so, because it just does a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff that you like to do. All right, up next here we have Dread Raven, a new neutral epic. It is a 3 mana 3 4 beast, and it has plus 3 attack for each other Dread Raven you control. So it's a 3-4 by default, but say you had a board full of seven, that would be six other Dread Ravens. That would be an additional 18 attack on your Dread Raven, making it a 21 attack minion. Or if you had all seven of those, I guess that would be what, like 147 attack total on board. So yeah, I guess the sky is sort of the limit for the Dread Raven, maybe some pun intended there. That said, of course, getting a scenario where you have exactly seven Dread Ravens on board, or really even like two to three Dread Ravens, I think is going to be a real challenge, right? There are clearly some ways to do that. In the reveal video, we saw a priest seancing their Dread Raven and putting an additional one on board. But even at three mana, you could play like two Dread Ravens and seance, but it'd be hard to play the third Dread Raven. There are also some cards that come to mind like Dire Frenzy or even Togwaggle Scheme, where you shuffle a bunch of Dread Ravens into your deck and you draw them and then you play them. The challenge there is always just that 
Dread Ravens only have four health and they don't attack immediately. So it just takes one flame strike and your big crazy game plan has failed. Now, it is just a three mana, three, four beast. I don't want to lose sight of that. That in and of itself isn't the end of the world. Like that's almost a playable card, you know, a hunter or maybe like a druid deck that valued beasts could potentially make this work. It's not going to be better than other alternatives we have available in those classes. It's just not better than like an animal companion for for hunter for instance so it's really the shenanigans that would empower this card and even just getting two of these down for six mana it's like two six mana six fours it's just uh or you know four six mana you're getting two six fours which is okay but it's two cards in hand it's not crazy powerful so at the end of the day what i'm saying is this is all shenanigan it looks like no consistency no real power spike too susceptible to all kinds of stuff so you can't really commit a lot of resources or energy or game plan to getting it to work. The balance there is just off. Like if you commit four or five cards to make this work, your opponent deals with it in one, the game is over, your deck failed, it doesn't make sense. So unless there's some just absolutely absurd combination I haven't thought about or some way to give these charge or rush so that they can interact with the board immediately, to me there's just really no way to make Tread Raven work other than just as a three mana three four beast which is merely okay it's probably a fine arena card here and there with some funny moments but ultimately not a great competitive card moving on here we have a griffin card of some sort this is another one that's been uh translated and i don't know the actual official name just yet so we're just gonna put in here you know hunter griffin basically it is though a three mana four one beast and it has rush that's pretty cool already. And Battle Cry, draw a rush minion from your deck. Uh, this is a really nice little card, right? It's a, a beast, which is nice for Hunter. It is basically a four damage removal spell on a body. You just get to throw it out there and it trades into something. Often going to trade very well on turn three. Almost nothing has more than four health uh, on turn three. It's going to kill most stuff very efficiently. And then it's going to replace itself in hand. So you don't even mind playing it. You just keep drawing into more resources. We've also already seen some rush synergy stuff via side quest come into the hunter pool as well. And that means this card to me fits in a lot of different worlds, whether you're going for some kind of rush specific build, just a mid rangey hunter, sometimes even an aggro hunter could use a card like this just to keep putting stats into play, trading down into their opponent's stuff and keep refilling their hand. Certainly things like a Zephyrus hunter, if they need a three drop, this is a suitable one. Is this better than a card like animal companion? Debatably, yes, actually. I think it could be in a lot of ways. It probably depends on the deck, but definitely comparable and complementary to Animal Companion, if not a straight-up replacement. So for me, this, this Griffin looks like a very solid option for a lot of different decks. I think this thing will be played. It's particularly good with something like Zilliax in the world where you have rush minions that you want to draw into. So all in all, every way I look at this one, it just looks strong. It does a lot of good stuff and will probably be a great card. Next up here, we have Breath of the Infinite, and I love this artwork. This is super cool looking. It's a three mana spell for Priest. It deals two damage to all minions, so a bit like Volcanic Potion of Old, the mage card that did exactly that. But if you're holding a dragon, it will only damage enemy minions instead of allied minions. So in a dragon deck in particular, this is a very efficient early game removal tool. But to be frank, I think it just kind of feels fair these days in Hearthstone. There's nothing about this one that feels like crazy strong, like so many of the cards we're seeing in Descent of Dragons. And I think that means this card may just not make the cut. It's probably going to be fine. Maybe a dragon deck will run it here and there. Maybe they'll one of it. But at the end of the day, I feel like most decks are going to have bigger and better things they're looking to do. Uh, this card, you know, two years ago, I might've said looks insane, but nowadays it just kind of looks normal. It looks fine and fair, uh, a little bit restrictive, but yeah, it's still good enough to be played, right? Just not like crazy strong, not something to get excited about. It's certainly fine early game removal. Although I will say these days, I think some, some ways a, a three health break point is way more important than a two health break point. So I'm wondering if that will be an issue for this card all in all, looks fine, looks fair, looks fun and cool, but just nothing to get super excited about. Next up is the Kobold Sticky Finger, a new 5-mana five 5-4 five pirate. And the Battle Cry will steal your opponent's weapon. So instead of weapon removal here, we have weapon thievery. So if your opponent has, you know, 
a 6-1 Gore Howl. I'm assuming you steal it and it becomes a 6-1 Gore Howl. I'm sure the durability will remain. If they have, you know, a 3-1 Fiery War Axe, I'm sure you'll steal a 3-1 Fiery War Axe, which essentially, you know, not only destroys their weapon, which can be nice, but gives it to you. If you get some super collider charges or something, you might be super pumped because uh, you got a very high value sort of weapon uh, for playing this. Now, that said, I don't really think most decks will prefer Cobalt Sticky Finger over the alternatives like Harrison Jones or an Acidic Swamp Ooze. Those both offer something way more valuable for most decks that are going to care about weapon removal. Acidic Swamp Ooze is much cheaper, so you can efficiently play it while doing other things. That's going to be important to some decks. And then Harrison Jones is just a big resource gain in other decks that care about having cards. In other words, if you're super defensive, if you're if you're stressed about your opponent having a cool weapon, rarely do you really care about getting one yourself because it's just only going to marginally complement your strategy. But drawing two or three cards off Harrison is great because you included those cards in your deck. You want those cards. You know those cards are fitting for what you're trying to do. A random weapon probably isn't. So I don't see a lot of met metas or scenarios where Cobalt Sticky Finger makes more sense than Harrison. There might be one deck out of, you know, 20 where it's like, yes, I care about having that weapon. Maybe some crazy meta weapon shows up that's like everybody wants to have a copy of it because it's just so good. All those things are possibilities, but in most cases, I think this will fall to like the third spot of all weapon removal access in uh, Constructed Hearthstone. So uh, a fine card in a lot of ways. It's certainly not doing anything bad. It's really powerful, good stats, like um, good effect, but probably just not as good as its peers and therefore won't see a lot of play. Next up here is Transmogrifier, a new two mana, two, three, neutral epic and it reads whenever you draw a card transform it into a random legendary minion so we've got that uh, arch villain rafam sort of effect where your cards are turning into legendaries but instead of you know every card in your hand and deck this is just one at a time when you draw it or you know of course maybe more at a time if you're drawing multiple cards and i think you know the first Use case example that comes to mind for this is something like Plot Twist in Warlock or the new Felgorge card where you're drawing pretty big hands of cards all at once. And if you want to, you could choose to transform them all into legendary minions with Transmogrifier. Now, I will say uh, with Rafam, that's been a pretty debatable strategy in the past. And although it can be great against very specific sorts of scenarios where you're like trying to grind down a control warrior, for instance, in most cases, random legendaries are kind of weak. There are some bad ones, some synergistic ones, some that are very hard to use. Uh, even like really good legendaries like Edwin Van Cleef aren't very good in a handful of legendaries because it's really hard to combo out a ton of cheap stuff and make Edwin good, right? There are all kinds of situations like that where your random legendaries are bad. You get three Millhouse Mana Storms, of course, right? And the good ones rarely make up enough for the bad ones. And it means your opponent knows you don't have removal spells. You're kind of stuck to only minions. But the one cool thing about Transmogrifier is that condition is no longer true with Rafam, <clears throat> Or as it is with Rafam, because you can still draw spells. You don't, have to, you don't have to have a strictly full hand of legendaries. But at the same time, that's a problem. Because when you get 10 legendaries, you know there are going to be four or five good ones, four or five bad ones. When you only make, you know, one or two legendaries the chances of getting a bad one remain the same and you may just never get that good one like you may just get a couple mill houses in a row and never hit the dream dragon queen alex Straza or whatever so there are some advantages and disadvantages of this card compared to similar style effects but at the end of the day i don't really know why you'd want to do this in a deck like does a plot twist warlock want to make a giant hand of legendaries and still retain some stuff uh, some spells and so on and so forth in their deck like maybe i, I don't really see why uh, you'd have to run this deck, this card in your deck to to ensure that possibility. And then if you didn't want to do it, this card would feel pretty dead. Maybe you're just trying to hit a random splash legendary. But at the end of the day, this to me looks like more of a fun card, a meme card. Like I'm going to enjoy playing it, trying to do crazy stuff, but not necessarily a competitively viable or consistent card. I think it's just too awkward to use. Only a handful of decks could really use this successfully at all. And uh, for that reason, it's not going to be a card you see much on the ladder, just a card for memes and for fun, which, by the way, is great, cool design, really crazy design here, uh, just not particularly good.
Ankar is a four star card. Red Raven is a two star card. Griffin Dude, whose name we don't know, is a four star card. Breath of the Infinite is a three star card. Kobold Sticky Finger is a three star card. Transmogrifier is a two star card. And there you go, folks. That wraps it up for this review. Hope you enjoyed it. If so, please hit that subscribe button. We're pushing to 80,000 subscribers right now. And uh, 100 is on the, on the horizon. I can see it when I get to 100,000 as soon as we can. Uh, but until then, please share your thoughts on these cards in the comments below. Always love hearing your take, why I'm right, why I'm wrong, etc., etc. And uh, all said, thanks for watching. And until next time, Game on.